Hello, and welcome to another exciting edition of the Web of Conspiracy. I am your host, Adam Webb. Uh, it is great to be back with you again this Friday. Uh, first time going live here in a few weeks, so uh, we'll give this a go. Hopefully there are no technical issues, uh, but nevertheless, uh, I am live with you today. I have a great show planned for today. It's somewhat off of the uh, the typical vein of what I usually talk about, but uh, uh, it, there are some certainly some related paranormal phenomena associated with this particular uh, topic. So I'm excited to talk to you today about the Oak Island mystery. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. Uh, first, a few th- announcements and a few things that I wanted to touch base with. Um, first off, I do this every episode, and I'm going to continue to do this uh, till I'm no longer doing the show. Uh, I just want to thank all the listeners of the show. Um, it amazes me every week to see just how much the show is growing. Uh, I'm really stunned. Uh, when I started this, I, you know, I did it because it's something I was interested in and something that I've enjoyed doing and enjoyed reading about and have been, always been sort of fascinated with these topics that I cover. And I, you know, I, I was over on another network for a while and, and just never really seemed to catch on there and was it really wasn't getting the kind of support and, and uh, really wasn't able to, to control the direction of the show the way that I wanted to. Uh, I come over to Spreaker, I start producing the show here and taking on the responsibilities of doing everything with the show, and it's been well worth it. The show has caught fire in a way that it never did in the, old, in the old network I was on, and it amazes me every month how much the show has grown, and already in February, I'm, I'm blown away, and uh, we're only halfway through roughly now today. So um, once again, I just want to thank all the listeners who have jumped aboard who listen to me now regularly, as well as all the new listeners who are just starting to catch on because there have been quite a few new listeners this month. So um, once again, thank you to everybody for, for, uh, for listening to the show. It's a passion of mine. It's something that I love. And uh, I just want to thank everybody once again for, for continuing to support the show. It's, it's amazing. Um, another thing I wanted to discuss, uh, I, I've talked openly on the show now, for those of you who've been listening to me for a while about um, my cancer diagnosis that I received uh, back in late summer and uh, know that uh, I've been through numerous surgeries, uh, four surgeries to remove all of it. I was diagnosed with uh, melanoma and uh, after the fourth surgery, um, I found out that uh, they had finally removed all of the cancerous tissue and precancerous tissue, uh, got clean margins on everything. So I'm um, very fortunate in that. And uh, after after I released the uh, the show on podcast last week, I had a follow up appointment with my physician, and uh, it was determined that I will not need any other uh, conventional treatments. There's no protocol for it, um, so I won't have to worry about going through any type of immunotherapy or chemotherapy. Fortunately, uh, not something I'm really looking forward to either way. But nevertheless, uh, I, I will have to continue to monitor and I will have uh, regular checkups and certainly skin screenings and I'll have blood work done to make sure. But um, it appears, as I said, I've had a sentinel lymph node biopsy that came back clean. It appears that it was caught in time and was caught before it spread. So I am very fortunate and grateful. And for those of you who have taken the time out to wish me well in this treatment, I can't thank you enough. To hear that support from people who don't know me, I mean, you know me through the show, but you've never really met me, so um, it's great to to hear that kind of support out there. It's it's you know I know that I'm not alone in in this uh, fight with cancer, and certainly um, certainly many people are going through the same kind of thing, and certainly many are in much worse condition. So um, it's great to have all the support you can get. And just this uh, past week, I had uh, lost somebody to cancer, um, so. To, uh, it was just a, a reminder of just how uh, how uh, tragic the disease is, and hopefully that uh, we can start moving in a direction where we can get some real progress in terms of treating cancer. Um, on that note, I also want to acknowledge I got an email from a listener named Jace from Kentucky, and uh, I just want to thank you, Jace, for the email. Um, first off, uh, I am considering some uh, alternative uh, therapies, and I have looked into turmeric, so it's certainly a supplement that I'm going to con- and that I'm actually looking into trying now. So uh, I, I appreciate that. And also, I uh, want to let you know, um, I liked your idea about the Shroud of Turin. And that's actually something I have considered, uh, I put on the list of show possibilities, and that's uh, made the list. So uh, look for a show on the Shroud of Turin here in the coming months. Um, 
but it's definitely a topic that's worth interest in. For those of you who uh, hadn't maybe seen the news, I know the Huffington Post reported uh, they've been doing some uh, research into the Shroud of Turin, and it's believed that an earthquake may have helped contribute to the image being placed on the Shroud. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Shroud of Turin, it is supposedly the burial shroud which uh, Jesus Christ uh, had placed over him, and it uh, maintains this visual image of his body on it. So um, it's believed that an earthquake may have helped contribute. Um, I will talk about that certainly when I do the, do the show on the Shroud and... Uh, We'll get into a little more detail on that later, but it's an interesting story. So, and uh, it's one that uh, there's a lot of certainly debate to be to be had about it. So, we'll get into that here in the coming weeks. Um, that being said, today's show is one that, as I said at the start, is a little little off topic in some respects, but it's something that I've heard about for a while, and I have had a, a great deal of interest in. And then I had seen that there was a Docu series being aired on the History Channel for the Oak, the Curse of Oak Island. Now, um, I watched that series. The, the first season recently concluded last uh, last uh, Sunday, and so I figured that uh, I would go ahead and wait for the conclusion of the series to determine what they found uh, in their uh, search for this treasure, which I'll get into, or relics on Oak Island. So um, it's an interesting story. So I'll give you a little bit of background in terms of those of you who aren't familiar at all with the Oak Island mystery. Oak Island, now there's several Oak Islands, but this particular Oak Island is located off the shores of Nova Scotia in Canada. Um, it is reported to have had a number of bizarre events associated with it, which is what initially caught my attention to this uh, particular story. Um, the first real reported kind of any kind of real significantly important things occurring on the island it goes back to 1795 uh, when there was an 18 year old man named Daniel McGinnis who had saw these strange lights coming from the island, uh, which caught him off guard and uh, shortly thereafter decided he was going to investigate what was going on in the island when um, he found came upon this mysterious pit uh, located on the island and decided that he was going to dig into the pit and see what was there. Well, he enlisted the help of a couple of friends of his, and they dug. They went all the way down to a, a, a depth of 30 feet and didn't find anything, and then he just gave up. Um, there had been some rumors then of, you know, what's there. Well, you know, there was the, uh, you know, the idea of perhaps, perhaps there was some buried treasure on the island, things of that nature. So, you know, after 30 feet, they said enough was enough, and they moved on. And these rumors persisted over the years. Uh, and, and not only that, not only buried treasure, but there was also reports and rumors that perhaps there was buried religious relics, that the Knights Templar uh, hid the Ark of the Covenant or the menorah from the Temple of Solomon uh, there on the island, that this is where that they had sailed to the New World and hid these uh, important religious relics in this uh, on this small island so this persisted and about eight years later uh, uh, the Onslow company came uh, in 1803 to search for the treasure and to excavate what referred is now referred to as the money pit now what's interesting is that they went to a feet they went to a depth of 90 feet and along the way, every 10 feet, they would find these like markers almost as if there was this was like a little teaser, so to speak, a little clues, little hints. But not only that, but they found coconut fiber. Now, for those of you who are any at all familiar with the, the northern hemisphere, know that uh, Nova Scotia, Canada is not does not have indigenous coconut trees. Um, so finding the coconut fiber in this pit on the island would suggest that it was placed there, that it was brought there, that somehow coconuts were brought to this island. Um, the, the island is Oak Island for a reason. It's full of oak trees, not coconut. So the fact that this coconut fiber is there, uh, it, it, it was was bizarre. And it, and it certainly garnered more attention, perhaps, than this year. Now, at a depth of 90 feet, they found this mysterious tablet, which unfortunately is 
seems to have been lost at this point. I know there's some pictures of it, but there's some question as to where the whereabouts of this tablet. But this tablet had this myst these mysterious symbols, rune-like type of symbols on it that were, you know, scratched into it, etched into it. And it is reported that these symbols translate to 40 feet below, 2 million pounds buried. Now, that's the reported translation. Now, it's question that once again, there's some questionable uh, truth to that. It's unknown. So, what is perhaps the most interesting facet to this money pit is that at about 33 feet, the pit flooded. And they had, they began trying to, you know, bail out the water, trying to empty this pit, and they were unable to do it. It continued to flood. Now, it was later discovered that this pit was flooded with not, you know, fresh water, but it was flooded with salt water. Ocean water was flooding this pit on the island. And as it was discovered is that there were, it appears to be channels from the outside of the island that flow into this pit. It would appear that as if though this was some sort of booby trap that was set, that if you didn't go about the correct way of getting into this pit, then you would flood it and would be unable to get to the treasure or whatever is buried there. The relics is, as is rumored, some believe to be there. So the pit flooded. And that has been an issue for those Later on, that would uh, go out and seek and, uh, and try to find fortune here. Now, interestingly enough, as I've said, a number of other groups have since then have tried over the years to, you know, excavate further, get deeper, try to figure out what's going on, try to figure out how to get the water out of the pit, do all these things, and uh, try to figure out what's going on there. Among those, you know, there's some rather prominent people, including, including former President Franklin Roosevelt, who uh, who was very fascinated with Oak Island, and as a matter of fact, um, was you know had it not been for the United States entrance into uh, World War II, uh, was contemplating uh, you know once his presidency was done, going back to the island in search of that hidden treasure or relics. Now, obviously, he himself wouldn't have been able to do it, but he certainly would have enlisted people under his watch to try to uh, figure out what was going on. But nevertheless, uh, a number of prominent people have tried over the years to get to the mystery, find out what is there, what is buried there, what is so important that somebody would go through this great an effort to set forth this many booby traps and to do all of this to protect. So where the story gets a little more bizarre, and obviously the strange lights, well, uh, there are many who argue, who claim that this island is cursed, that there, there's this weird supernatural presence. There are some that claim that the spirits of those who have died on the island, and, and yes, that is, that is a key part of the story. Over the years, six people have died attempting to find the treasure or the relics on this island, four of which happened on August 17th of 1965. Um, Robert Restall uh, was the gentleman who was leading this search at the time, and his son was there with him along with a couple other crewmen were attempting to uh, excavate further in the pit. Um, the senior, Robert Restall, um, as he was working towards the pit at the outside, there was some gas and fumes that emitted from the, from the pit. As a result, it caused him to lose consciousness, and he fell into the pit. Uh, consequently, his son went into the pit after him to try to save him, and he suffered the same fate, as well as two other crewmen who tried to go in and save all of them. Every, all, everybody who went into the pit never came out alive. All four died on that day, trying to save each other, essentially. Um, unfortunately... You have those deaths plus the deaths of two others over the years previously, uh, and, and in you know unfortunate accidents, things of that nature. Uh, there are people who argue well, that the island's cursed; that there's this presence that's not only is it uh, you know it, it's it's preventing people from getting there, or 
there's talks about you know mechanical equipment failures and technical issues and a lot of these uh, little things happening to prevent people from being able to find out what is buried on this island. So these these ideas they they begin to perpetuate, and then when you look at the number of people who've died, and there's a saying, there's a rumor that started that that seven people would have to die before this treasure would be found. There are those who argue that there are spirits that roam the island, that uh, the spirits of those who have lost are there, and that uh, there's even been uh, some suggestion of, you know, perhaps even extraterrestrial activity given that the strange lights. There are others who say that those strange lights are the lights of, of the spirits who, who haunt this island. So it has taken on this strange mystery to it, and it's been perpetuated by the unfortunate deaths of those who have tried, greatly tried in vain to get to the bottom of this mystery, to find this treasure, to find these relics, to find whatever it is that was so important to be buried and put forth in such a way. Now, you, you ask yourself, well, how do we know for sure? How do we know for sure there's something there? Well, there, there certainly seems to be plenty of evidence to indicate that there is something, in fact, there. As I had said earlier, every 10 feet, there was a marker of some sorts. It would appear as if, though, someone deliberately, every 10 feet, left a little bit of uh, a parchment or a little bit of something every 10 feet. And so that it, it was enough so and compelling enough that, going back to you know the first excavation, that people continue to go further trying to find what was in this pit. Now, over the years, people have lost a lot of money and has lo and have lost lives in this pit. That's why this pit is commonly referred to as the money pit. That this is this is the the strange, you know, the the, the, the strange pit is just sucking the money out of everybody who tries to uh, to find whatever's at the bottom of this. Now most recently the island the majority stake in this in this island was purchased by Marty and Rick Lagina um, along and then their ownership. And then they formed with uh, a, you know, a one Dan Bank Blankenship and his son, Dave, and they can, they basically own the rights to this, uh, to the island and the rights along with the uh, permission, special permission by the Canadian government to seek out what is going on in terms of what's actually here in the island. Now, this, uh, the, now the, the History Channel show is, is compelling in that it documents what they're doing, at least what they were doing up to this point in trying to figure out what was happening on the island. Now, during their search, during their excavation, they discovered more coconut fiber. And they have this coconut fiber analyzed. As it turns out, this coconut fiber dates back to the 16th century, roughly, uh, which is pretty remarkable that, you know, using uh, the uh, carbon dating analysis could be able to determine that it's that old. So there would seem to appear to be enough evidence to indicate that there was some sort of man, you know, humans were there, much earlier than than anticipated and were on that island and brought coconut fiber there they had coconuts with them which this certainly seems to lend a lot of the the flame fan the flames of the idea that there is this perhaps this treasure that's buried there perhaps in the in the, in the glory days of the uh, piracy that uh, pirates had come to the island and had buried some sort of treasure and had set up this elaborate system to prevent people from getting to it so that persists, this idea persists and seems to have had a degree of validation from that discovery. Now, as these brothers continued on their search, they came across, a, a gentleman had come to, and reached out to them by the name of Peter Amundsen. Now, Peter Amundsen has a very bizarre theory about what he thinks is happening on Oak Island. And he in, apparently derived this theory from William Shakespeare, Shakespeare, who was a, uh, a, a, a friend of the legendary Captain Cook, 
who had, uh, of course, sailed and explored in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, according to Amundsen, Shakespeare put hints that there was this particular um, formation that led to this treasure map, so to speak, that correlated with this island using the stars. It's a very complicated theory, and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of great detail in terms of all the specifics, but using the works of Shakespeare found this map, which coincidentally enough, a gentleman who owns property on the island found these large stone boulders in his property in the form of a cross. Now, what Amundsen says is that this isn't just a cross, it's part of a larger formation, and that um, that there's this point on this that he believes is where whatever is buried, whatever is, is actually buried on this island, whether it's treasure or, or religious relics, whatever, that this is this one particular point that he refers to as the mercy point, that this mercy point is where the treasure is located. Now, for the record, this point isn't the money pit. As a matter of fact, he seems to believe, as many others are starting to at this point, that this money pit is really just a hoax, that it's a diversion, that this is all set up to have people believe that there is something there in this particular spot on the island when in fact, there's something somewhere else. Now, Amundsen's theory is that this mercy point is where this treasure is located. It just so happens that this point is, in the, is at, the, at the triangle point of a swamp on the island. Now, this swamp is a little peculiar in that it appears that the swamp is a man-made swamp. It doesn't appear that it was a natural formation, that it didn't occur on its own. It's in a triangular formation on the island, which the island is not very big, but it's in a triangular formation. And so the brothers had already at that point contemplated draining some of the swamp to see what they could find. Well, they go on this great effort to drain the swamp to try to get it out as much as possible. And it, it's needless to say, it's a tedious, difficult task that requires a lot of work, a lot of effort, and uh, you know certainly a certain amount of money going into the pumps and trying to pump all of this water uphill and away from the site someplace else. Now, as they pump this, they bring in uh, a couple of uh, gentlemen who... Um, who basically work in metal detection and have some highly advanced metal detectors, some that can, you know, that can reach below water and go at significantly deep levels. And not only that, but be able to determine what type of metals, ferrous, non-ferrous, you know, in that way you can determine if it's just iron, if there's steel, or if there's gold or silver or something of great significant value, which would certainly be what uh, the Laginas were hoping for in this. Now, as it turns out, they begin searching through this part of the swamp, and they don't get it all drained, but they get some significant non, non-ferrous metal hits. And they decide to bring in an, an, a diver who could dive into this bottom of the swamp and be able to search and find out what it is that they're looking for, what, what this is. Now, as the diver gets brought in, uh, and he begins to investigate, um, he starts losing the hits. It's almost as if though they start having technical issues. Now, keep that in mind, because it has always been reported along the way by those who have worked on this, in this island, have tried to find this treasure, that they continually have mechanical and technical failures. Well, this diver begins having the same issues with his metal detection gear when he goes under. Uh, it just doesn't work. He's, all the hits that they had found before, they can't seem to find now. Nevertheless, as he continues to search, he does manage to find, and, th and this is the big find at the end of the, of the season, of this first season, a coin. Now, that's, for the Laginas, that's huge. Now, you know, at the time, you know, it, it's, it's, it's indicative, okay, that perhaps there really is something here in this part of this one. Maybe there's something there. There does seem to be a, something going on here. Well, they bring in an expert to tell them, you know, try to identify what this coin is. As it turns out that this coin 
is actually a Spanish Maravitas 8 cob. Now, it's, it's kind of a complicated term, and only those who are coin collectors are really going to understand this. But it's also commonly referred to as a treasure coin. This coin dates back to approximately the 16th century, the same dating as the coconut fiber. There does seem to be a, a degree of evidence pointing to the possibility that there is, in fact, some sort of buried treasure. And perhaps it is there at that mercy point. And they just need to be able to dig a little bit further and a little bit deeper. So there does seem to be something there. And that does seem to confirm some of the rumors about the island. But yet there are those unknowns, the paranormal activity that people report on the island, the strange actions, the seeing those strange lights in the sky and around the island. And those legends have persisted for a number of years. But I have to tell you that in, in, in my researching the island, this is one of those things where I'm not entirely sure that there is any kind of real paranormal activity going on here. Do I think that there was an elaborate system created to divert and, and, and to throw people off the trail of where the actual real treasure may be? Absolutely. But I'm not sure that it, 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 this is something that's being perpetuated by paranormal phenomena. That's not to say that maybe there isn't some sort of paranormal phenomenon there, that perhaps there isn't some sort of issue with those who have lost their lives there. Certainly there's a tragedy there. But I don't know that there is such thing as a curse on this island that's preventing people from having this happen. I think that the deaths of the individuals, you know, the, the tragedy going into this really is more of a product of people's desire for adventure and finding and seeking treasure. That, that created a series of events that unfortunately cost the lives of six individuals. That being said, uh, uh, while I, I tend to dismiss that, that, that it's the driving force of what's happening on the island, it's not to say that it isn't happening, that there isn't something there. I don't know that you can have a place that has that kind of tragedy, particularly on one day uh, with the four individuals that lost their lives there, and there not be something still there um, but it does appear as though this group perhaps has wisely turned their direction away from the money pit that they seem to have discovered that okay that perhaps there is something here but it's not any further so the, the question still remains what is buried there is it just treasure it certainly seems to indicate that there is treasure there but is there something more uh, did the knights templar bring religious relics to that island. You know, it, it, are, are we sitting on one of the most powerful biblical uh, objects, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, that's ever, at least ever depicted in the Bible? Um, an amazingly powerful uh, gift from God, at least according to the Old Testament, that could also serve as a weapon. Um, so it, it, if, if, in fact, the Ark of the Covenant would be buried there, that would be obviously a tremendous find. If, in fact, there is millions of dollars worth of pirate treasure, that would certainly be a tremendous find, too. Uh, nevertheless, how much paranormal activity is involved in hiding this treasure, uh, I don't know. I don't believe that it's a real factor in that. But I do believe that there might be an air of mystery about this island. And it's certainly perpetuated by what's happened. Nevertheless, it doesn't appear that, that there are ghosts or demonic forces that are trying to, uh, you know, keep people from getting to this treasure or some sort of unknown force. That being said, um, there are those who you continue to believe that there is something keeping people from finding this treasure. And uh, the, the next season, or at least finding where the brothers go from here, will be key in determining what is actually going on here. Um, if, in fact, as I believe, that the money pit is just a diversion, that, it, it, that there's nothing of any kind of value there, then uh, perhaps they will find more at that mercy point in the swamp. That, in fact, they will be able to uncover something more there. Um, but time will tell. At any rate, I believe, I, I, I believe that, that while there may be some paranormal activity there, just doesn't seem like it's anything that's necessarily related to the island. I think it's more a product of unfortunate circumstances, 
by people who were willing to risk uh, their lives in uncovering a mystery, which, you know, honestly, hey, you know, there are a lot of people who would love to uh, to to adventure and to do those things. So while it's unfortunate, it does appear that their efforts are not entirely in vain. At least it seems as if, though, the Lagina brothers are on the right track in determining what is actually buried on that island. So, well, that's what I have for the Oak Island mystery. Uh, before I leave you today, um, I wanted to just kind of talk about a couple of little things here real quick. Um, if you haven't had a chance to, uh, check out the show's website and post uh, archives of the show there, as well as, uh, you know, check out the social media pages. I, I, you know, I try to put some stuff on there. I know I did some stuff this uh, week in, in commemoration of, uh, stop the NSA, uh, the online protest earlier this week on the 11th. Um, and certainly that's a, a subject I'm going to be talking about here in, in, in the coming weeks as well. I've been really focusing on a lot more of the paranormal stuff as of late, but in the extraterrestrial stuff, but I'm looking to get back more into some of the conspiracy uh, topics as well. Um, and uh, as well as kind of revisiting some other topics that I've discussed in the old program. So uh, check out the social media pages, check out the website. Um, and, and it's a work in progress and it's a one man show. So bear with me as I try to update as I go. Um, uh, nevertheless, I'm, I'm also uh, looking to, you know, the possibility of maybe doing uh, more than one broadcast still a week. And I'm still, still kind of kicking that around, but uh, I'll let you guys know about that as, as, as whether or not that becomes to fruition or not. But um, next week, I haven't settled on a topic yet. I'll keep you updated on social media and let you know. Uh, I am planning a live show again next week. Uh, however, the week after next, uh, I think I'm going to take a, a, a vacation a week, so to speak. So uh, next week, I will do a live show. Uh, the topic will be forthcoming on social media. Uh, until next week, have a great, great week. And once again, thank you to everybody for all your support over the last few months, as well as uh, you supporting the show and, and your uh, thoughts and your support of me and my, uh, and my fight against cancer. So uh, once again, thank you, everybody. Have a great week, and I'll be with you next Friday.